welcome to the Amplify to Seven Figures podcast, where we look inside the mind of seven-figure entrepreneurs to see how they amplify their business and amplify their life. Let's welcome today's guest. Paul Ross is an author, speaker, and master hypnotist who coaches high-level sales teams to crush their quotas and their competition. He has been featured on the BBC, Fox, CNN, NBC, The Huffington Post, Up Rocks, Rolling Stone, and more. Please give a very warm welcome to the show, Paul Ross. How are you doing today, Paul? Breakneck action, high adventure, round after round of financial and scientific wizardry. Same old day. I need my coffee, though. <laughs> don't, don't we don't we all so paul i want i want to jump straight in today and tell me tell me about these three magic words that actually destroy any negative belief oh sure so those words and i should preface this by saying that my background is i do neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis and so through my practice of working with people with many limiting beliefs i found that if someone comes to me with a limiting belief like um, I'm just not good at closing the seven figure clients, the traditional way that people are prescribed to deal with that is to say, I am a great closer. I can close any client, blah, 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 blah. The problem is, and here's a rule of hypnosis in any battle between the conscious and the unconscious mind, the unconscious mind is always going to win. So if you have a hundred thousand repetitions of that belief, I can't do it. I can't do it. Suddenly you start doing your positive affirmations. You're going to have a train wreck of a problem because you're going to have that internal conflict. So I teach my students and people I train to say, up until now, up until now, I did not have my skills to close my big money clients. And now I claim my learning of my skills. Do you understand? Or mm -hmm. up until now, it was my experience that I did not have the skills or my skills. So it acknowledges to the unconscious mind, yes, there has been a problem. It binds it in time and says the problem is up until this moment. And then here's the really key thing. It decouples it from your sense of who you are. It's no longer about I am a person who cannot close big money clients or I am not a person who knows how to invest. It's up until now I did not have the skills. Because as a change worker, and a lot of what I do is mindset, as a change worker, I can tell you, it's very difficult to change people's sense of identity. You ever had the experience of complimenting someone who just thinks they're not attractive and they say, yeah, but my hair is ruffled or nah, I look a little fat or blah, blah, blah. You can't yeah. do it. But if you sort of sneak in through the back door of skills, people's beliefs about their skills are relatively easy to change. So that's what powers those three words. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah, yeah, and it's a lot more powerful than abracadabra, I, I'd say, as well. It is a form of abracadabra because language is magic. Language is the structure of our consciousness. It shapes our consciousness, shapes our decisions, drives our behavior. So I think language is magic. Quite frankly, my ulterior motive for appearing on any podcast or doing any kind of business is I want people to fall in love with what I'm in love with, which is language. And I'm I'm exactly the same, you know. I'm I know we were talking beforehand about like embedded commands and all those those kind of things as well around NLP. So you you work with a lot of of salespeople and and those kind of things. So what's one question every salesperson entrepreneur must ask themselves? before they enter into any negotiation or sales presentation. Right. Well, now, in order to reveal this, I have to tell you that my way of looking at selling and influence and persuasion is kind of, I don't, I can't swear in your show. <laughs> um, it's bat bleep crazy. <laughs> it's an inside out topsy-turvy way of looking at it because I think selling is about creating states of consciousness in your client. What states of mind do I want my client or my prospect to be in? That's the question to ask yourself. If I can give you a metaphor, 
Mm. I have a sheet of gold foil and I have a sheet of cardboard and I want to conduct a current of electricity. Which one of those two mediums is going to conduct the electricity better? The, the gold foil. Exactly. So consider your sales pitch, your whatever it is you're selling to be the, the electric current. But the state of mind of your prospect is going to be that medium, the conductive medium. So how can we create states in our prospect, our client, of being focused, of being excited to listen to us, of on the unconscious level being fascinated, seeing us even as their leader who they must follow. How do you create that quickly? I don't mean develop it over a period of hours and all that other. This, that's the traditional teaching. I'm coming along and saying, and my mother taught me to think this way. She said, Paul, if the masses are thinking that things work one way, they're probably wrong. See if you can question all the ways that people normally think about things, which is what I've done. This it's, it's interesting that you say about like, it's almost like, like say flipping the script on uh, the traditional way of, of doing things. And so were you one of those kids then that all the time was going, yeah, but why, but why? Uh, oh, that's it? all kids. That's yeah. all kids. <laughs> No, what I would do is ask my mother questions and my mother rather, usually she'd answer me, but sometimes with the more difficult questions, she'd say, look it up. And we had a whole set of encyclopedias from floor to ceiling. She'd just say, go look it up. And if the answer was in the encyclopedia, she'd bring me to the, li to the library. And if it wasn't, for those of you who are young, they used to have things called libraries where they had books <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have the internet and the answer wasn't in the library mom mom would say you go be the one to find the answer yeah because that's the way, way, the way things were and do you think that made you a a, a better hypnotist and a, a better nope. business person because of it no nope. no nope. what did that is something i don't reveal in my biography because i like to spring it on the hosts okay as a okay. surprise I'm a former and still I'm a semi-retired and pretty much former dating coach. And I learned a lot of these skills by coaching guys who are 30, 40, even 50 years old who'd never had a date in their life. So I had to learn to take them, these people who are in the worst states of mind, states of, of shame and self-doubt and self-pity and learn to create much better states for them. I had to do it very quickly. These are people who are ready to throw themselves off of, off of a bridge. And then I had to teach them how to communicate in, with women in a way that's emotionally interesting and emotionally evocative. I learned this from my own lessons because I was 28, 29 year old guy, maybe had one or two dates in his life and they ended disastrously because I had those same issues with self-esteeming and shame and the rest of it. So when I stumbled onto NLP and hypnosis, it really helped me cure those problems for myself. I, and, and was that, is that because you did self hypnosis for, for yourself or, yep. or was that because yep. you, you started hypnotizing yep. other women? Say again, the last or, part. Or, or was that the hypnotizing the other women uh, with the kind of language patterns that you're using? Um, I don't like to call it hypnosis. I like to call it being emotionally evocative. Sure. So let, 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 let's jump into that a little bit. So what's, what's the different, what's the difference between the two and like, because, because I think at NLP and hypnosis sometimes, right. In selling gets a bad rap and it can be, it can be done in such a way where it's, it's actually beneficial for, for every party concerned. So I think it is, so how, Look, how do you it do depends that? on how you view it. If you view hypnosis as saying you're going to sleep, you will obey me and you won't remember everything I did. That's Hollywood. It's yeah. unreal. That's completely, it, it's not the way things work anyway. When you get robbed or your house gets burglarized, a special victims unit doesn't roll up to your house. Your CSI, Miami CSI, doesn't roll up to your house. It's TV. It doesn't work that way. Hypnosis is about expanding choice. It's about taking those parts of your consciousness that are stuck, setting them to one side, so that the part of your brain that has unlimited potential can open up to new directions, new ways of thinking, new beliefs, new behaviors, new feelings. I, and 
so how, how would you go about doing that with with someone you know let's say let's say you've got someone that's never had a date uh in, in uh, do we years. really want to go down this road of dating coaching we can do it if you want to well well uh okay let, let's 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 take it a little bit more down the the business route then uh and because i'm 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 fascinated from from an nlp perspective like how, how that change occurs because i've i've had that own my own hypnosis over the last few years last few months and it's made a massive change in my life and in den- uh, identity as well i mean so, more about that in what way so um just in terms of general confidence and and clarity and certainty with the decisions that i make and the person that i needed to become to right. to work with the people that we work with and did you do that yourself or did you see a hypnotist yeah so i i saw a hypnotist and it worked Good for you um, yeah Good works for you. works really really well and like because that is another reason as well. I wanted to interview you, Paul, because a lot of people talk about hip, hip, there's a taboo around hypnosis, right? I, like, I told my parents about it and they were like, oh, we don't, we don't want to, oh, no, no, no. I don't want, I don't want anyone putting me to sleep and controlling my mind. And all it doesn't that. put, it, look, exactly. it's not like you're awake anyway and have full control of, um, uh, it's not like you're awake anyway and have full control of where, where you are. So, Paul, tell me, what should you always be selling? And I, I know you said that this is nothing that you've been uh, people have been taught before. So, tell me about that. You're never selling your product or service. You're always selling decisions and good feelings about decisions. And here's the thing: nowadays, people no longer trust that they can make good decisions. So, yes, you have to get people to know, like, and trust you. That's true. And by the way, nothing I'm saying today is designed to replace your existing sales process. It's simply saying, in fact, my whole thing is to only coach and train people who have a successful sales process. You have to be at least high six figure for me to even want to work with you. All I'm saying is if you take these subconscious sub sales methods and words and you put them in your existing sales process, you'll improve it by 30, 40% very rapidly. So circling back, you're never selling your product or service. You're always selling good feelings, decisions and good feelings about decisions. And here's the thing. Yes, you have to get people to know, like, and trust you. But now there's a second track, an invisible track of selling. And that invisible track is you have to get people to trust their own decisions and people don't anymore and usually can't. That's because people, number one, are super distracted. You see this thing? This is one of Mm -hmm. your number one enemies to making a sale because people just can't focus. And for anyone listening on the audio, that that is a beautiful mobile phone. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) Um, And so people can't focus the way they used to. They're bombarded by too many options. A mind that has too many options usually winds up picking none. They don't Mm -hmm. trust a lot of the decisions they've made that used to make sense. Remember the real estate crash and the banking crash? There's been a few, 2008. I think there's another big one coming, but that's neither here nor there. People I, I still agree. remember that. <laughs> People have a record distrust in their institutions. So how are you going to handle that invisible track of selling, getting people to trust their own decisions? That's what I think no other sales What's training selling? is addressing. Wow. <laughs> well, that's a matter of, yeah, so, so. again, that, a matter, that is a matter, again, of using the right kind of languaging that uh, I'll give you an example. In order to use suggestive languaging, one of the keys is to be vague. So if I said to you, Paul, as we're speaking today, I'm not sure all the reasons you might find yourself wanting to move forward ahead. But as that's taking place, I just want to say, I'm so glad to be here to help you recognize a great decisions being made. Now, did I say anything specific there? Did I say my program is going to, I'm going to show you how my platform will increase efficiency by 20%? No, no, no. I didn't it's say just, anything uh... specific. So when, but 
it made sense. Grammatically, it made sense. It was grammatically well-formed, correct? But correct. notice I also put, I put a lot of vague language in there, and I said, a great decision's being made. At the end of that pattern, I said, a great decision's being made. Did I say what the great decision is? Nope. Did I say who's going to make it? Nope. <laughs> Did I say when or how or why? No. So when nope. you're deliberately and artfully vague with your language like this, it affords the unconscious mind the opportunity to fill in the blanks. And whatever mm -hmm. a person can imagine, whatever you can get your prospect to imagine for themselves will be perceived by them as being their own thought. Therefore, they will not resist it. Does that make sense? Yes, definitely. And for, I, I suppose that, that comes across the board from hypnosis, NLP, and also then in sales and dating, that, that process of, I, I remember that, you know, you have those times with, with, you, with your wife or, or someone else where they come up with this idea and they're like, oh, I've got this great idea. I, and you're like, I actually spoke about that like three weeks ago. But yeah, great, great idea because you've actually planted the seed, so to speak, already. I'm saying, now, what if you could accelerate that process instead of three weeks into minutes? That's my bat bleep crazy Alice in Wonderland claim. that You actually can do it. Mm -hmm. And by then, that, yeah, by being vague like that, you can suggest that they're going to make a great decision. That makes a lot of sense. Definitely. I know. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, what, one of the big questions that, that we ask on the show as well, Paul, is now you've been, you've been on the speaking circuit. You, you've been a master hypnotist. You've done a, a lot of things. What, what do you want to be remembered for when you die? That I was the greatest teacher that people have ever encountered. That's what people tell me. I, over and over, my students have told me, you're the best teacher of my life. My parents were teachers in one form or another. My mother taught was my teacher of folksy wisdom. My father was an actual teacher. And I love teaching. It's in my blood. More than even being a businessman or a business person or an entrepreneur, I'm first and foremost a teacher and even a healer. This is my passion. This is what I love to do. I told the now ex-girlfriend that, that I made the mistake of telling her that I love my work more than her, which you should never say that. That's a big, for a dating coach, that was a stupid move. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I, that, that, but that's certainly a powerful, a powerful why. And why, why is that the legacy, right? Why? Why? Why teaching? It's just in my blood. It's my calling. It's what I was put here to do. It's what I was put here to do. It's what I'm meant to be doing. It's my path. Super, super strong. So one of the questions as well is we always ask, what is one quick win that people can use to amplify their business today? One quick what? Win. Win. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by win. You mean tip, technique? Yes, yeah, so something. What what will move the needle for someone? What's something someone could do today off the back of listening to this episode where they could come away from this episode and go, okay, I, I did this, Paul, and wow, that was amazing. Right. So the one thing I would say is get yourself in the right state of mind. How can you create a state where you're not despairing about getting the result and you're not demanding about getting the result either, that you're neutral, that you're interested in the result, but you're invested in your skills. Create a place where you're interested in the result, but you're joyously and with a sense of humor and with a sense of perspective invested in your skills. That's, that's something that I think a lot of people can take away from this as well, right? Is that, uh, being in the right state of mind and and if 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 someone was to, to do that as well what what would be a quick tip that they could do to to make that happen make that occur breathe breathe <laughs> breathe <laughs> specifically i learned this from a book on athletics 
which is breathe in for a count of four, hold for a count of two, exhale for a count of six. The other thing I would say, it's, uh, I have to add this in, it's a general thing in business, get the right people on your bus, get the right team. I have a fantastic team. I couldn't do anything without my team. If someone doesn't fit your team, get them out as fast as you can. And do we mean that from a skills level or a culture perspective or both? Skill, uh, all of it. All of it. <laughs> hey, if you're going to be with a partner, your partner romantically or and otherwise, better support your mission, better be part of your team and you should be part of theirs. Fanta- fantastic. So, Paul, it's been great having you on the show. Who would you nominate to be on the show next? No question about it. One of my peers and a fascinating guy, his name is Chase Hughes. Chase is an expert in interrogation and body language. And he's trained interrogation techniques for the U.S. military, law enforcement, intelligence agencies. He's a really interesting guy and he's written some fiction and nonfiction books that will challenge your belief in free will, <laughs> as I like to say. <laughs> that And that stuff is, is really transferable into business. I'm a big fan of Chris yeah. Moss as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Have Chase on and tell him that I sent I I sent you fantastic paul so and finally where can people find out more about you sure so i have a rapid sales accelerator training it's easy to get it i don't send people the links or do any of that stuff because people are worn out from that just shoot me an email i read all of my own email person i'll give you my personal email address you can get the training for free it's maybe 30 minutes of your time to go through and they'll teach you some remarkable stuff. Email me. My email is paul at speakerpaulross.com. And the subject line is free. And I have one condition. My one condition is you put your big takeaway, one big takeaway you got from this interview. And I'll immediately get you access to the course. I'm not going to send you to a link and do all that other stuff. And uh, I, don't you think people are sick of that? It, it it depends what the thing is. <laughs> well, yeah, and this is a this course will this training will show you how to overcome objections using these unconscious influence techniques. I have a part of the training is on mindset, and then another part is just on some words you can use in your selling to increase the power of your sales presentations. It's about thirty minutes long, all told. Fantastic. So that's Paul. Ah. at speakerpaulross.com subject line free and you have to give me one takeaway and um if you want to follow me on linkedin it's speakerpaulross.com forward slash linkedin fantastic paul so it's it's been great having you on the show thank you you have been listening to the amplify to seven figures podcast with me paul ace and my amazing guest paul ross Remember, guys, amplify your business and amplify your life. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to the Amplify to Seven Figures podcast. To access the show notes, episodes, and this month's giveaway, head over to www.amplifytosevenfigures.com. Remember, amplify your business, amplify Amplify your your life.